Hi guys, Tom from Horizon Hobby and Spectrum RC here, here to give you a quick rundown of how to use our new Spectrum Lap Timer system. It's a cool tool for anybody looking to practice uh, with drones and for cars, which is really cool. So, first part that I'm going to go over is the gate system, or the base unit as we call it. Part number is SPM LTG 5000. When you buy this, it's going to come with this little guy here. Five LEDs on a string. It's fairly long, like that. So you're going to take these LEDs and you're essentially going to hang them off of something. You can hang them on a tree, you can hang them off of a fence post, you can hang them off of a spectrum gate, like that one. So essentially what you're going to do, once you've hung it, is plug it in. You're going to plug it into the top there, and then you're going to take a three cell LiPo battery. It doesn't take a lot of juice, so you don't have to get anything big. This 2200 will really last about all day. So when we plug it in, a helpful little thing that it does, right when you plug it in, is it flashes these numbers at you. It's flashed 12.08. Those numbers were for the voltage of the battery. And then it's going to be flashing these other two numbers, a zero and a nine. That's what it's gonna come at at, at at default. What these mean is the one that's a zero without the dot next to it, is the gate number. And then the nine is the power output of these LEDs. So first the gate number. So instead of it just having a start finish, which would be the zero, zero would be your start finish line, you can assign this gate, if you were to buy more than one of these, to different sections of the track. So around a curve or a straight line, you could essentially say, okay, where am I going slow at? And you could use this, these multiple gates to figure that out and hone your skills. Really cool tool there. So you can go up to nine. So you can use up to nine extra gates, including uh, or beyond the finish line. So zero would be the finish line, up to nine. All right. To get to power level, we'll press and hold, and it will have a nine or a number with the dot next to it. Um, so this is the power level. Uh, zero is going to be the lowest, nine will be the highest, and why you would want to adjust this is, let's say you're indoors. You don't want to have a high power level because, as you know with like TV remotes, uh, a high powered TV remote will bounce off of the walls and you'll be able to point it behind you and, you know, change your channel. So you don't want this bouncing off of walls inside on a high power output. Uh, you'll leave it at around zero to four for inside or for a tight track, and if we're going outside on a sunny day, you can go up to six, seven, eight, or nine. Essentially, you just kind of play with these numbers until you get to a point where you feel that it's triggering at the right time, and it's not triggering too soon or, you know, on the other side of the track. So you'll play around with that. I usually start with about five and go up or down until I feel like I've got a good number. To save the setting, you'll press and hold the button. One cool little thing when you buy this uh, gate or base unit is you'll notice that one of these LEDs has an extra connector on it. Right here, it's going to be the last one. You can actually just use one LED. So if you're using this for car racing, you don't need a whole string of lights, you only need one. You can set up one, set it up on a small little tripod, poking up like that, and it's great. That's all you need. So first thing we're going to talk about is how to install the lap timer sensor, this little guy here, onto a surface vehicle like our 22. Um, essentially all we need is a telemetry receiver like this one that has an X bus port right there. You're going to use the four wire lead that comes with the telemetry or the spectrum lap timer sensor. We'll plug it into the back right there. And then we'll plug it into the X bus port. That's about as simple as it gets. Once we've got that mounted into the car, we can kind of pretend that we've got that. And we'll use double sided tape on top of the car and we'll it, point it to the left or right towards our lap timer trigger. That's the important part is that it's facing towards where the trigger is going to pass by the sensor. So if we're going to use this for FPV racing, like our quad here, this is a Theory XL, there are a couple of options. Um, if it's a bind and fly and it comes with one of these boards, which is what comes out of the Theory XL and the Conspiracy, there is a pack of wires that also comes with the 
sensor that has a single lead here and then two here. This one is for power. It needs five volts. So we need to find a five volt source of power. You got one here, you've got one over here. Kind of depends on where you want to put it, but that's what you need is five volts. And then on the other end, we've got the Spectrum Serial Telemetry Receiver, the 4649T. It has a port right there it's labeled LAPS. It's also labeled VBAT. You have to, if you're using VBAT, you'll have to unplug that and plug the LAP sensor just like that into that. And then just like with the surface stuff, we'll mount it or plug it into our LAP sensor and we'll mount it onto the bottom of the quad, either pointing to the left or to the right, whichever way your trigger is. Another option is we can do without this guy here and just use this little guy. So this is just this IR sensor and it can, it's, it's specifically made for using with the Spectrum FCF 400. This is our Race Flight 1 flight controller. It's pretty, pretty advanced stuff. I really like it. And it's got a port just for IR sensor that you may see there. And simple enough, you just put it through here, solder it to the other side, and clip off the excess. And you've got it there. We've got one pre-mounted right here just so you can kind of see what it looks like. See how we got it there. With that, you will also need the 4649T telemetry receiver mounted to the top of your uh, F400 flight controller. Now we're going to walk through the Spectrum radio setup. For our example, we're gonna use a DX6, but this works with sixes, nines, 18s, pretty much any of the new Gen 2 radios. And as long as you're up to date, so make sure you've got it up to date, uh, you'll have this new menu. So we're gonna, first off, we're gonna, as you see, I've got the Theory XL set up. This also works for the Spectrum DX5R, as we're, I was talking about with Surface stuff. It works with the Surface DX5R radio. We're gonna hit Lap Timer. Lap Timer is the new menu that you're gonna have if you have your radio up to date. In Lap Timer, you'll see there are a few different options. One option we're gonna to, going to ignore is Switch, because we're not using that function for this, the Lap Timer. Um, we'll see mode. We've got stopwatch and we've got countdown. Stopwatch is essentially where you'll have a number of laps. So as you pass the gate, it'll count the number of laps until you've reached the allotted number of laps that you've chosen. So let's say we got four. Once you hit four, it'll stop counting. On countdown, this is where the timer will start at three and you'll have three minutes to make as many laps as possible. Uh, and then it'll give you the lap time for each of those laps. Telemetry is important. If you're using R RPM, that RPM is for the 4649T if you're plugging it into the lap port. So if you're using the 4649T and you plug it into that single wire lap port, set it to RPM. If you're using the X bus port on a telemetry receiver, or if you're using the FCF 400 flight controller board with that tiny little sensor, you'll use lap counter. So hopefully that makes sense. Then we've got file name. What this is, is that the system will record the lap timing set, uh, your lap times as a spreadsheet onto the SD card in your radio. And enabled turns it on, you can turn it off as well. Pretty cool function for just being able to take it off, plug it into your computer, open up a spreadsheet program and say, oh, hey, there we go. There's all of my times and it has a date and all that good stuff. We've got the word next. There's this word next in the bottom right corner. We click on that and this is gonna be all the sound events for when we, you know, there's gonna be every minute you can have it make a tone or say, you know, three minutes remaining. Uh, you can have it count or say one minute at one minute, or it can make a tone or a buzz. Uh, you'll have 30 seconds, 10 to, much like the timer system already built into the radio, it's a lot like that. 
and then time every lap. So every lap that you make, it'll say, you know, there's 20.09 seconds, and then time every gate, because you can set up multiple gates, it'll have the same thing. One cool one is that you can have it when you start the heat. So when you start the finish line, or start, cross the start line, you can have it say a one of these different uh, sounds that are set up on your radio. You can even pick custom sounds, which is kind of cool. You could do a, your own custom start and stop sound. So just like that. So let's get a quick example of what you're going to see in here on your radio while you're racing. To get to the lap timer display, we go back to the main screen right here and we scroll to the right till we see lap timer. We'll have 180 seconds, that's our three minute countdown. Once you go past the start line, it'll start counting the time, just like that. So this one will start counting down and our first lap will start counting up. Let's say seven seconds later, we've gone a lap. Nine .32. It just said 9.32 seconds and it started the second lap. We're still on heat one and so forth. We can click on new heat to restart the heat. So let's say you crash or it ends early, you can restart the heat. Or if the timer runs out, the heat will end and you are allowed to finish your last lap. And then you start again, it'll start another heat when you pass the start line once again. And then if we click review, it brings up a more comprehensive lap chart, time chart there. So I hope this video has been helpful in explaining how the lap timing system from Spectrum works. If you have any questions or comments, we have a comment section below this video. We'll answer those questions or you can reach out to us on Facebook or horizonhobby.com. Thank you.